Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. For this one, I decided to go over the new masteries that will be coming to the preseason and season 7 for League of Legends in general. The ones that you'll have to be dealing with in just like maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a month or so. So, without any further ado, boys and girls, let's check out the new masteries. Now, you're going to notice that for the most part, the tree is pretty much the same. I mean, you still have the ferocity, the cunning, the resolve tree. And yeah, a lot of the masteries or the keystones or whatever... Are pretty much the exact same but there's also a lot of new ones there's changes to old ones and there's rearrangements of certain ones as well so honestly you might as well get an idea here right in this video of what exactly you should, you'll be expecting or what you should expect so let's go over that right now and just go through everything so starting off with the ferocity tree first we'll be looking at tier number four the one i want to look at right here battle tents so this is me or battle trans rather sorry this is me one of the new ones now you can't really let me just put some points into it you guys can kind of see this it's, it's only a pink box the actual uh graphic is not implemented just yet but that, that's not you know that's not what we really care about what we care about is what does it offer battle trance one point gain up to five percent increased damage over five seconds when in combat with enemy champions so it says up to five percent over five seconds so i'm assuming it goes up by one percent every single second up to five seconds you know of course giving you that five percent increased damage so if you're in combat if you're playing some kind of sustained damage dealer or maybe even someone that you know happens to not really not really focus on burst but someone that focuses on consistent damage this one could be pretty damn good if you're someone that focuses on burst and killing someone within a couple of seconds chances are that's not what you want you probably want something like this instead the double-edged sword which we'll talk about in a bit because it is a little bit different as well so let's go all the way back up here and talk about one of the other new ones Fresh Blood, you can see the icon is actually the exact same icon, but it does give you a completely new effect. So, Fresh Blood, 1 point out of 1. Your first basic attack against the champion deals an additional 10 plus 1, oops, plus 1 per level damage. 6 second cooldown. So, pretty damn sweet as well, so it gives you a lot of extra damage in the laning phase. 10 damage plus 1 per level, so if you're level, let's say, 6, boom, that's 16 damage every 6 seconds with your first basic auto attack so if you're a champion that likes to maybe you know throw in some harass here and there in the laning phase you know maybe one auto attack harass like maybe oriana or cannon with his w and things like that this can add a nice little bit of extra burst you know if you maybe need some help or if you want to maybe even focus on securing your lane and just even further kind of pushing your dominance this one can definitely help you out or if you're someone that needs obviously the help feast is pretty good or if you're a support or whatever you know you want to help your team and you know kind of give them more damage this is obviously the other choice. So that's kind of the option right there. So let's go into the next one, which we have uh, Bounty Hunter. Now this one is in the tier four, one point out of one. But this time, the difference is the fact that it will give you 1.5 increased damage for each unique champion that you have killed. On the live service currently, it's actually only 1%. So this obviously gives you just a slightly more percent damage. I mean, not the biggest change in the world, but it is a buff and it will give you more rewards. So pretty damn sweet regardless. Next, we have Oppressor which is in the ferocity tier four which got actually sorry removed and it got replaced with double-edged sword i'm reading a little note i have on the side from surrender at 20 so you know thanks shout out to the website by the way i have a link to it down below if you guys want to check it out for yourself but double or rather oppressor got removed and instead double-edged sword got put in here the icon is the exact same which is why i got a little confused but double-edged sword which used to be up here now got put into tier four deal additional five damage and take 2.5 percent additional damage uh as well so obviously that got changed before on the live service i believe it's 3% additional damage you can deal, but you take 1.5% additional damage yourself. Now it's 5% and 2.5% respectively. Pretty sweet as well, so pretty good stuff there. And then we're going to go down all the way to Fervor of a Battle. Now, obviously Fervor of a Battle is pretty much the exact same, but it did get some changes. So let's go over that right now. So hitting champions with a basic attack generates a Fervor stack. Two for melee attacks, two seconds for ability hits, two second cooldown of course, which I believe is the same, but here's the difference. Stacks of Fervor last 4 seconds rather than, I believe, 6 seconds on the live servers. Let me just double check very quickly. I believe it's 6 seconds. Yes, yeah, so it is 6 seconds. And it currently on the live server actually stacks up to 8 times, giving you 0 to 14 bon uh, bonus AD based on level. But now, it only stacks, or it stacks up to 10 times, but it only gives you 1 to 6 bonus AD per stack. And it only lasts for 4 seconds. So not only does it last less, but you have to have more stacks to actually get a decent benefit off of it. And on top of that... You also have to, uh, you know, you'll, you will lose it more quick. So, it is a nerf. It's a nerf to Fervor of Battle. And I'm not too surprised. Fervor of Battle is a very dominant keystone at the very moment. A lot of people take it. It gives you a lot of extra damage. So, this sort of makes it not as strong. And if you wanted to get to a certain point where it is, you know, being effective and giving you nice damage, well, it's going to take a couple more auto attacks or spells or whatever. So, that's how that works. And that's kind of the changes there. So, 
those are the major changes happening in i believe the ferocity tree i don't think there's anything else to talk about so let's go ahead and jump into the cunning tree not as many changes here but regardless ones that are worth talking about so here first we have green father's gift which is this bad boy right here let's, let's quickly uh quickly spec into that bad boy boom this one is actually pretty sweet green father's gift one out of one points stepping into a brush causes your next damaging attack or ability to deal three percent of your target's current health as bonus magic damage that sounds pretty damn sweet man so if you're uh you know i instantly think of top lane the second i think of this i instantly think of top lane if you're someone that's facing a tank perfect keystone or perfect mastery for you to take percent of your target's current health as bonus magic damage again it's not maximum hp it is the current hp i mean i guess that'll be pretty op if it was maximum hp but regardless this is it's a nice second cooldown, but regardless, it's great harass in laning phase against tanks, people that stack HP, you know, it'll help you a lot. Get the HP down a little bit there, so pretty sweet. I have to say pretty sweet mastery right there, without question. Next, we also have Precision. Pretty much the same thing, but now instead of giving you flat armor penetration, it will give you 5 out of 5, five out of foul. Five out of five points. It'll give you lethality instead, so boom, up to 5 points. 8.5 lethality. Not flat armor penetration anymore because that stat did get removed so boom you have that for you right now instead and that's i believe actually pretty much it for the cunning tree not a whole lot of changes in the cunning tree for the most part it's still the same but there's still potential changes to come later on down the road so you know you can definitely maybe expect something there but regardless let's go over to the resolve tree some decent changes happening here in the first one we have a siege master completely you know let's go over your quickly completely new uh mastery siege master one out of one point, gain eight armor and magic resistance when near an allied turret. So if you're maybe Janna, if you're someone that's protecting turrets, and you want to just, you know, I guess be a siege master, this is pretty good. I'm trying to think of the best situation where you'd want to take this on what kind of champion. Um, again, Jan Janna is the first one that comes to my mind for whatever reason, I guess because she's always, you know, shielding towers and she wants to protect them and save them and keep them up as long as possible. And you want to obviously not be towered over, you want to kind of chill and be safe. In general, honestly though, this is a pretty good uh, mastery because if you're someone that's sort of very prone to getting tower dove or if you feel like the people you're facing are very uh, very high chance of them tower diving you, this will definitely help you out a little bit. So, you know, in the early game, 8 magic resistance and 8 armor. Pretty sweet, not too bad. I mean, it is very early into the tree, so can't expect a little too much, but pretty sweet regardless. Following that, we have in the tier 4 tree, we have Fearless, another completely new trait. Gain 10%, 1 out of 1 point of course, gain 10% plus 2 per level, bonus armor, and magic resistance when damaged by an enemy champion for 2 seconds, 9 second cooldown. Of course, if you're playing a tank, if you're playing some kind of maybe supporty tanky champion, this is something that you definitely want to have, it'll give you that extra tankiness whenever you're going in for the dive, you know, whenever you're trying to you know, do battle, pretty, pre pretty sweet stuff. It is percent scaling, so, you know, it's not something you want to take if you're not going to be getting armor at all on your champion. Again, good for tanks, good for you know support tanky champions that will stack up armor at least a little bit and actually make the percentage, the 10% of this, you know, something worthwhile. So pretty sweet stuff regardless though. But moving on into the final thing that we want to talk about, we're going to be looking at Courage of the Colossus. So Strength of the Ages, you can see, is no longer in effect. Instead, it is now called Courage of the Colossus. The icon is the same, but the effect is completely different. Gain a shield for 10 plus 10 per level plus 7% of your maximum health for each enemy champion for 4 seconds after hitting an enemy champion with hard CC. So, the first thing I think of, I don't know why, instantly, is Leona. If you're playing someone like Leona support, or if you're in the top lane playing someone maybe like, I don't know, Scion with your ultimate, you know? You dash in there with Leona or Scion, you go in there, you hard CC someone very easily, very quickly, 30 second cooldown, but you get this huge benefit, so essentially, this is like, you know what? Are you a champion that is just an initiator? You're a tank, you're just pure tank, but your job is to find that right initiation, go in there for your team, and make the battle happen. But you don't want to die. You know, you want to be the first one in there, but you don't want to be blown up. You don't want to die. You want to be you want to go in there and be tanky and still soak up some damage without you know dying too fast and letting your team have time to sort of engage and rush in there and follow up your engage, right? Boom. This is perfect for you. This will give you exactly what you want. And I mean I have to say, the stats seem pretty damn generous because it also gives you plus 7% of your maximum HP. So, I don't know. Pretty damn sweet stuff right there. So, But either way, guys, I mean, there you have it. The new Mastery Tree for Season 7 and the pre-Season 7 as well. Definitely some nice additions here and there. Not enough in the Cutting Tree. I would have liked to see a little bit more in the Cutting Tree. That would have been pretty sweet. But regardless, a lot of sweet additions and movements and even changes to the current Masteries and Keystones that we know and love and maybe hate. Either way, there you guys have it. If you enjoyed this video... Boom, hit that like button to show your support. 
And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to share this with your friends. Let everyone else see what's happening in the Mastery Tree and what's coming in the preseason and Season 7. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace, peace, peace.